Welcome to the Lancaster Patriot Podcast. My name is Chris Hume. I am the managing editor here at the Lancaster Patriot, a conservative print newspaper serving Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and beyond. Today we will look at a few local stories, and then we will also consider one story outside of the county. So let's jump right in. Our first story today comes from WGAL. Avian flu confirmed at 5th facility in Lancaster County. So WGAL reports that avian flu has been confirmed at a 5th location. It's a commercial egg layer facility. Uh, The USDA said that more than 300,000 birds have been euthanized at this location. This is on top of the nearly 1.5 million from a Crider Farms location and a couple other farms in Lancaster County. Uh, The story says more than 3.5 million birds have been killed uh, at Lancaster County Farms because of the avian flu. The the USDA didn't release the location of the fifth, fifth facility at the time of this story. Now, this is an important story. If you haven't read our latest issue, we have a story on our front page about the avian flu where we speak with a Lancaster County farmer who takes a different perspective than the government agencies that are responding to this. And we've seen with COVID how the government can come in and overreact and limit business and increase regulations and restrictions and limit freedom because of what they deem to be a health crisis or emergency. And we have a Republican Representative Ryan Ahmet tweeting out this. He said, quote, with the news of avian flu in Lanco, uh, we must ensure that PA is ready to act and adapt quickly to protect our poultry flocks, farmers, and economy. Representative Mindy Fee and I have a bill to allocate $2 million to limit the impact of avian flu on our farms and food supply, end quote. And on his website, he also says that he's going to be introducing that bill to provide an additional $2 million for the detection, response, and prevention of avian flu. What that means really is that the government's going to put more money into more regulations for local farmers. So I don't think this is a good thing. I think this is going to just be more paper pushing, more headaches, uh, more regulations for the farmers when our local farmers already take the avian flu seriously. They know what they need to do to, 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 uh, to you know prevent it with you know biosecurity measures and things such as that they know what to do when it's detected but the issue also of testing comes up when when we had covid the government well, everybody needs to be tested everybody needs to be tested even if there's no symptoms and again it's the same thing here with the avian flu every every flock needs to be tested uh even if there's no symptoms and that creates another problem of potential false positives it also just creates the issue of more activity on the farm so This is kind of another example of of perhaps, you know, people not thinking that much about it and and just assuming, yeah, the government should just automatically get involved that there's an avian flu. And when there are many of us and and local farmers that say, no, we could handle this quite competently without the government getting involved. So that's story number one. The avian flu continues to spread in Lancaster County. And you will hear probably from some that this is you know, a a great emergency that all our birds could be destroyed and killed and uh, we won't have any uh, chicken or eggs. But uh, take that with a grain of salt. The avian flu is something to consider and and chicken farmers have been considering it for a long time. They know how to deal with it. Do we need the government getting involved after they've demonstrated, even before COVID, I mean, just how, uh, you know, unable they are to, you know, their inability to deal with uh, these issues, which leads us to our second story. So speaking of the government's involvement in agriculture, this this story comes from the Liberty Loft. Many of you may be aware of this, but the title is Amish farmer targeted by USDA facing loss of farm as campaign to destroy our food supply continues. This is an opinion piece by Seth Hancock uh, from April 27th from the Liberty Loft. And he says that uh, last summer, the Liberty Loft brought you the story of Amos Miller, an Amish farmer who operates Miller's Organic Farm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. He goes on and says, Miller has been a target of an ongoing campaign by the USDA to destroy small family farms as the government agency acts as a protection racket for the corporate power. So again, again, this is Hancock writing, Seth Hancock writing this opinion piece, but he's making the point that the the government continues to try to control our agriculture. In this case of Amos Miller is a case in point that you have a man who 
uh, simply wants to serve his neighbors, wants to provide a service, and the USDA says, you're not doing it on our terms, and we are going to shut you down. Uh, the story goes on and says, going through the government's case and the corporate propagandists, you will find that there was no crime committed by Miller. His crime was having happy customers who want organic food. Not one customer had a complaint. There are no victims ex uh, except the corporate farms that don't want to compete against local farmers who are independent. So that's really what's behind this. Uh, Amos Miller represents a threat to government-controlled agriculture, and the USDA can't stand that. The story says Miller was ordered to pay a quarter million dollars last summer by a federal judge uh, and was threatened with arrest and prohibited from operating some of his farming uh, as he was told not to slaughter animals at his farm. This despite all Miller's attempts to work with the USDA willing to pay a $25,000 fine despite not committing a crime. So Miller's legal battle continues, including a recent court appearance this month. Daily News 365 described Miller's crimes as, quote, slaughtering and processing, slaughtering and processing the meat he raises on his own farm and selling it fresh, frozen to members of his private food buying club who've all signed contracts stating they understand the meat is not processed in USDA inspected plants or treated with USDA required chemical preservative, preservatives because that's how they want it. And the very reason they are willing to go to such great lengths to get it. But the USDA thinks his customers are too stupid to think for themselves and need them to come in and protect them from themselves, end quote. So here we have a case again, and, and this is actually, this type of thing is what got me interested in, I guess you could say politics. Um, I guess it's been almost 10 years now when, when the issue of raw milk uh, being illegal in certain states and the, and the USDA saying and other government agencies saying hey we know what's best for you and your health and this has been going on long before covid and maybe some people have uh, awakened to it with with the covid debacle and pandemic and have come to realize that the government is not in a position to make decisions for your health i don't trust the government one bit to make a decision regarding what meat is safe for me to eat what milk is safe for me to drink i want to make those own decisions myself how can you trust a government that endorses the slaughter of millions of babies that wants three, four, five-year-olds to be, to be injected with an experimental vaccine? How can you trust that group to make health decisions for you? Uh, if you are doing that, you need to wake up and, and do your own research and your own study and make your own choices. And yeah, there's some risk involved in freedom, but I'd rather make those choices myself than have the USDA tell me, hey, you know, it's not safe for you to drink raw milk or it's not safe for you to buy this meat from Amos Miller. Um, that is uh, an infringement of freedom and liberty. And it's one, unfortunately, that many people have accepted because they think, well, you know, the government must know uh, about this stuff. But the more that you study and understand what the, how the government has dealt with these issues, you realize that uh, you shouldn't have much faith in them. And so this is just another case of the government getting involved and, and uh, attacking someone who wants to provide a service to his neighbor, who wants to provide meat, organic meat, you know, raised in the way that his customers want it. They do not want the USDA involved, and the USDA thinks that they have the authority to tell you what kind of food to eat. And if that doesn't concern you, then... Um, yeah, that, that, that's a problem. Um, so there is a GoFundMe account um, that is linked in this story to help Amos Miller save our traditional foods. They have a goal of raising $125,000, and at the moment they are at $92,000 approximately. So uh, they're over halfway, and um, they've had 919 donations, um, and can't see here when this started, but there is a GoFundMe uh, page for Amos Miller. And uh, that is a worthy cause, in my opinion, to, to stand up against the government racket of trying to control what we eat, control what we put in our bodies, control um, you know, the, the, the food products we sell to our neighbors. This is not a free society if you cannot sell uh, your farm products to your neighbor uh, freely. So those are our first two stories uh, dealing with the agricultural industry here in Lancaster County and the government's involvement. 
anytime the government gets involved in anything, they are able to mess it up uh, quite royally. So uh, we'll continue to follow this. Uh, we'd like to, to get more on this story, and I'm obviously personally hoping that Amos Miller uh, can win this case, and which would be a victory for freedom. Well, story number three comes from WHTM, and it is a Lan Lancaster man killed in pedestrian accident identified. So WHTM reports that a Lancaster man was killed after a pedestrian accident in West Lampeter Township. Police in West Lampeter Township responded to the 1800 block of Rockvale Road at 7 a.m. Wednesday for an unconscious 43-year-old man on the road. The man has since been identified as Samuel S. King of Lancaster. Officers found King with several head injuries and a damaged scooter nearby. Hours later, police located the suspected vehicle involved, but officials have not identified any suspects. Police say the incident is still under investigation. So, sad story there. Lancaster man killed in pedestrian accident. Uh, the man who was killed has been identified, but the vehicle, um, you know, the driver of the vehicle that struck him is, is still uh, not, has not been identified. Well, let's move on now to our hate crime section. And we've gotten away from the localized idea of law and punishment and government. If, if, my, if my wife and I were on that same block and we were beaten, God forbid, the punishment that would be meted out to those individuals would then be less than if those individuals had attacked a gay couple. So why should I, in that sense, be deserving of less protection under the law? So this is from the Lancaster County District Attorney Office, and this has to do with the DA's Human Trafficking Task Force. Now, in the newspaper, we have previously reported about a sting operation that the task force did um, trying to, uh, you know, crack down on the men who would go and, and pay a prostitute for uh, her services. Now, this story is about the task force arresting, uh, actually arresting a man for uh, trafficking an 18-year-old, the, the story says. So uh, let me just read a part of this. The Lancaster County District Attorney's Human Trafficking Task Force has made its first arrest of a man charged with human trafficking and other related counts involving an 18-year-old female after the pair checked into a Lancaster City hotel. It says, Luis Fountain, 32, of Brookhaven, Delaware County, faces two charges of trafficking in individuals, felonies of the first degree, four charges of promoting prostitution, felonies of the third degree, and one charge of living off prostitutes, also a felony of the third degree. Now, we could certainly get into what the criminal punishment should be for this, but I will just say, first of all, that I classify profiting off of a prostitute um, is a, as a hate crime. Um, to profit off of the immoral act of se having someone sell their, their, uh, their body uh, sexual services for money and then profiting from that money uh, is an act of hate. Now, how this should be dealt with uh, perhaps is a discussion for another time, but let me just read this, the rest of this, a part of the story here to let you know what happened. So on March 1st, um, detectives in this task force observed an internet advertisement listing a female who was performing sex acts for money in Lancaster. The detectives then uh, got into a, a text exchange with the number provided and agreed to pay $260 to spend an hour with this woman at a hotel in Lancaster City. So then the under, undercover detective uh, goes to the hotel room, meets the female, provides the money, uh, discuss the sex acts that would take place, uh, and then, obviously, before anything happens, an arrest team enters the room, um, and it was, of course, the undercutter detective was um, just there to kind of provide the money and uh, make sure this was legit. So then an arrest team enters the room, an interview with the victim, um, that, that would be the female prostitute, uh, revealed that she met uh, Fountain online at the age of 18. Fountain then became her boyfriend. And again, this is from the DA's office. I'm just reading most of this. Fountain told her she could make money by having sex with other men. The victim stated she was making over $1,000 a day, but provided all the money to Fountain. Uh, police seized uh, $1,765 in the hotel room with the victim. 
She also reported that Fountain took her to other hotels in Lancaster, Harrisburg, and Delaware. Um, the statement goes on and says that the Lancaster County Human Trafficking Task Force continued to monitor Fountain, and he was arrested on April 21st, 2022, when he checked into a second Lancaster City Hotel with the victim. The defendant stated he met the victim on a dating state site and was trying to help the victim be a model. Yeah, that's a, a likely story. Um, <clears throat> now, the Heather Adams said human trafficking is occurring right here in Lancaster County. It is a profitable crime and can occur in any hotel in Lancaster County. She thanks both the hotels uh, for their vigilance and for their cooperation with, uh, with law enforcement. So this man fountain will be will be tried uh he, he will he's presumed innocent but he's going to obviously have a court case so this is the the human trafficking task force first actual arrest of a man who's charged with human trafficking and the way they're defining that is it can be a minor or a non-minor um, but trafficking someone uh, forcing them into into labor uh, specifically sexual uh, labor and then profiting from the their their money, so certainly a wicked thing, an evil thing, and and uh, I think we will take a look at this task force a little more in depth here in, in a podcast episode in the future, and, and just look at at what what is involved in this and and how um, we should we should deal with this in our county. But that is our our hate crime for today. Uh, prostitution is an evil, wicked thing. Um, it should not be countenanced. In a Christian society, and it is something that should be um, spoken against quite strongly and um, <clears throat> dealt with uh, appropriately. So, let's move on now to our final uh, story here. This is a story outside the county. Now, if you read uh, last edition, or the most recent edition of the newspaper, you know I mentioned this in the uh, on page two. This has to do with Disney and the Disney Corporation's battle with. Governor DeSantis and uh, Florida Republicans. So, for those of you who don't know, this kind of started with Governor DeSantis's bill, parental rights bill, uh, which the left just uh, had a, a fit over, um, and and kind of pressured Disney to make a statement. So Disney opposed DeSantis's bill, which would have prevent, which prevents uh, government school teachers from talking about sexual things uh, until a certain age, which, by the way, um, I'm not a huge fan of the bill. Number one, I'm not a fan of government education. The whole system is corrupt. Uh, it's unbiblical, and, and it can't be fixed because it, it's, it should never exist. But DeSantis's bill, and I know this is an aside here, actually uh, legitimizes and, and essentially legalizes sexual indoctrination fourth grade and beyond. Um, and this is what happens when you compromise and, and go with half measures and think you're winning a victory. But now in, in Florida state law, yes, it's, it's illegal for government school teachers to discuss these things K, pre-K through three, but it is then ostensibly legal to do it fourth grade and beyond. So not really a victory uh, when you think about it. And this bill was, was just applauded and, uh, by conservatives. But anyway, the Disney responded and back and forth, and, and now Governor DeSantis and the Republicans in Florida uh, want to take away Disney's special tax district, um, which I mentioned in the paper that, again, not something I'm too excited about. Um, instead of taking away uh, the tax break, if you will, that Disney had, why not give more people tax break? I think we should have more counties with less and less and less government control, and and Disney, and I'm not saying the way they operated it was, was totally correct. I mean, I don't have all those details, but I do know that they were very efficient. And uh, you could go into, you know, this district, the Reedy Creek Improvement Distri District that was uh, set up for Disney. And, you know, the roads were great. Uh, you know, there's no potholes. You know, everything's run smoothly and efficiently because the government bureaucracy is not involved. And so this, this district was set up you know, years, decades ago when Disney was coming to Florida to encourage them and enable them to be able to really create this world-class theme park. And now the Republicans want to take it away really in response to this whole um, parental rights bill, the bill that was erroneously dubbed by the left the don't say gay bill. But in any case, um, 
Where they're at now with it is that Disney is saying Florida can't dissolve the special task district until the debt is fully paid. So uh, they basically issued bonds. I mean, they have their own taxation uh, in that district. They, they issue bonds. They have debt as, as a district. And so they're saying we need to you know, clear all our debts. We need to get our house in order uh, before the state can actually legally uh, dissolve, dissolve this district. So that's kind of where it's at right now. But again, uh, I, I wish that instead of increasing government control, um, conservatives would say, hey, you know what, why don't we lessen government control everywhere else? Because to me, this, this is not a victory to, to say, hey, as much as I would like to see Disney um, be defeated, and I think the number, way, number one way that should happen is if Americans are really opposed to Disney's agenda to stop buying their services. But I don't want I don't really rejoice when more government tyranny comes in as a supposed victory. So that is where we're at with, with the Disney, uh, Disney, Florida Republican battle. Um, the uh, Republicans in Florida are going to continue to try to dissolve this district. And yeah, it's going to be presented as, well, let's have Disney pay their fair share as everyone else. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I understand that to a degree, but um, having other people... Uh, having to face government tyranny and oppression um, just because I do or another company does, I mean, uh, is not that encouraging to me. I'd rather see less and less government. And instead of saying, hey, let's ta let's make Disney pay all the taxes like everybody else, why not say, hey, let's have everybody else not pay the taxes like Disney and see if we can come up with private options for local government. Um, the more we can do that, it'll be more efficient. It will be better for everyone. And uh, it will start to shrink the size of government. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like many uh, Republicans are interested in doing that. So we will continue to follow uh, that story outside the county uh, with uh, Disney and the Republicans in, in Florida. Well, that's it for today on the Lancaster Patriot podcast. If you are not a subscriber to our newspaper, please go over to the LancasterPatriot.com uh, and subscribe. We deliver our newspaper once a week, a print newspaper right to your door. We are bringing back local, honest journalism. Uh, we are not going to be winning any awards from liberal uh, agencies or woke companies. We are standing on traditional values and ultimately biblical values, biblical truth, uh, as we seek to bring the news to you, uh, speaking the truth, but also providing commentary that is based in scripture because that is the only ultimate truth so check us out lancasterpatriot.com subscribe to this podcast tell your friends about the paper uh spread the word uh, we need more people to be aware that there is an alternative to liberal news media in lancaster county until next time god bless and godspeed